First Responders Day at Titan Stadium, an ICCAC matchup between old rivals. Would Iowa Western dispatch Ellsworth, or would the Panthers put the Reavers' undefeated season on life support? We'll find out coming up next. The Iowa Western Football Coaches Show is next, right here on the Reavers Sports Network and CBTV 17. Ready for the latest edition of the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show. I'm Jake Ryan along with Iowa Western Head Football Coach Scott Strohmeyer. Coach, 4-0 on the season. It seems a little bit odd that it took until game number five to get into that conference slate. Only two conference teams on that schedule now and it seems kind of odd that we would only have two conference games but that's a, something that a lot of teams here on campus face with look at Iowa Western Volleyball, Iowa Western Women's Basketball. The conferences are very small and that's what you face. What's your personal take on where the Midwest Football Conference has kind of dissipated into just three teams. Well, it, <clears throat> it's gone pretty fast. I mean, when we, I think when we started, we were the tenth team, and uh, down to only three left. So um, we got to make do. It's, we're good with the scheduling agreement, uh, but with only two conference games, um, you got to be one ready to go, and and uh, it's it's different. I mean, it is a lot different this year. Every game's important, but you got two. You could go two and zero in the conference and not win another one and be conference champs. Right. Even though you've got that scheduling agreement with the Jayhawk, you're not eligible for that conference title. So you've got to take care of Ellsworth and Iowa Central. So let's get the highlights from the Ellsworth game and see if the Reavers did take care of business against the Panthers. Reavers rolling out. Who's the guy up on the shoulders of the Giants there? <laughs> it's our ball, ball boy. He wanted to run out with the run out with the team. Well, speaking of running out with the team, Lorenzo Pratt getting the start for the Reavers and. You uh, put the ball in the belly of Lorenzo a couple times to start the game. Yeah, he had, he had a nice start to it, and there's a, a big completion there at the Taj to get us going right on the first drive. Taj with the big catch on the sideline. Now Tay Bender rushing, gives a pump fake there. He might have been past the line, but Ellsworth bit on it, and he almost gets in for the touchdown. Yeah, I was, I was hoping we'd get in. You're sitting there at the one, and, and uh, but we ended up, we're fortunate to get one to um, Anthony Davis. Well, Andrew Davis makes that big catch. It was only the second out of 42 times that you've thrown the ball from one yard out. Explain that. <laughs> 40 I, touchdowns otherwise on the I, ground. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We, we had a little play action, pat, or a, it's a dual option. The quarterback can run it or dump it, and we were reading the defender, played the run, and, and he dumped it over to uh, Andrew. There's a fumble by Zabrion Gunter, and he recovered it. That comes after the Reavers uh, got a pretty good hit on Alex Reed. Was Alex okay after that play? He was. He was. I, I don't even, he came out, he came out for a little bit and went back in. But uh, yeah, we're fortunate. Devon Pay, another big run. That seems to be his trademark. He'll hit that line and then just keep carrying the pile. Had a couple of those runs this game. Well, the thing is, is the first guy is not taking him down. And, and you know, so his, his yards after contact that were really good this week. Shoulder pump again by Tay, and he finds Devon on the outside. A touchdown for a Reaver running back through the air. Pretty, pretty good play by Tay, and, and a nice job by Devon getting open on that sideline. It was, and you know, it went through the progression pretty well. We got held up in one of our routes, and that's his check down route, and it was good to see that uh, we, we went through that and, and ended up getting in. Demarius Davis, another one of those speedy, fleet-footed quarterbacks, and you had to corral him all day. Hits an, a quick pass on the slant there, and then uh, takes off on the run here. Well, I, you know, going into the game, we knew it. You know, he's, he's athletic, and, and you give him a little lane, and he's going to take it. Well, he took a, an extra 15 on that after the late hit. Reavers get the football back, though, leading 14-7, to and then it's Lorenzo again to the outside. Yeah, we, <clears throat> we ran the ball pretty well. Um, probably should have ran it even more, but uh, it, was, it was good to get that, that, that part going in this game. Come back on a good run for Taj Williams there as he caught that one on the inside cut and then uh, hits the outside. Good, good blocking as well for the Reavers. Yeah, for sure. And we were trying to go 2-1 there and uh, just missed it. Probably, or I actually ended up intercepting it too. If we had him, I felt if we put a little bit better ball, but turn it over. That's their second turnover of the game and give them the ball back. So after the first quarter, after that scramble, the Reavers leading it 14-0, but Ellsworth putting a drive together and it's all in the legs of Demarius Davis, their quarterback. 
Yeah, they, I mean, that's a heck of a drive. I think they ate up like six minutes of the clock in this in this drive. 19 but, plays total, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing a good job. We got we got to step up and and make a play, but uh, they drive it down. Ty Taylor, a pretty good little receiver there, and that's from that slot position. He almost had 400 yards of receiving coming into the game, and then they hand off to Xavier Washman. Any relation to a former Reaver Isaiah Washman? That's his, his younger brother. Okay, so. Here is a the oddest onside kick I've ever seen. Probably wasn't meant to be, no. but uh, their kicker Dayton Balvans just kicked it as hard as he could. It catches off Ben Garlock and bounces 30 yards back. Yeah, I mean that's one of those things in this game. Uh, they needed some of those breaks. They get that one, then they run a reverse and get him into decent field or get some field position. And um, but you got to be able to respond. Sometimes those things happen. Well, the dark side did respond. They force a three and out after that. And, you get the ball back again, and guess what? Here's Devon Pay not going down on first contact. Gets something out of nothing on the outside, and they got a little piece of face mask on that run too. Yeah, it was good to, for us to be able to respond back to that, you know, and now to go up 21-7. And, and there's Taj Williams right in front of JJ Davis cruising into the end zone. I thought he was going to flip the ball right to JJ there. <laughs> I hope not, because they probably have thrown the flag. <laughs> So the Reavers go up 21 to seven and Ellsworth again, continuing to try to get out of that pocket. Nice job there by Ben Spath, who's coming over the backup center on the team, playing some defensive line for you this week. Yeah, you know, we, we got a little bit depleted and, and he, you know, he played in high school and knows the offensive line stuff pretty well. How about this one for Reed Bonner? Only a shirt tail tackle. Uh, saving a touchdown there for Ellsworth, but a nice return for Reed, and we've been waiting to see that pretty much all season. It was good, you know, he he uh, he catches the punts, and, and so give him a little bit of crease, and it was good to see. Lorenzo up the middle, and again, here's a quick pass inside. Ronald Nash trying and stretching for the end zone, not quite getting there, brought down, and you have a first and goal, and I thought, I thought right here that uh, Lorenzo got across, and they say, no, he didn't. We don't have a replay. What did you think, Coach? It, it was close. I thought he was in, even from watching the film, but then, at the end of it, I, it, it was close. How about this catch on the outside by Ty Taylor from Demarius Davis? And that gets him a little bit of room after taking over at the one after that fourth down failed to convert. Yeah, that's that's tough. You know, we, we had him backed up in good field position, or backed up and uh, they get the big pass after we don't convert and now they methodically drive it down. Yeah, Ty Taylor still with the football and, and not quite all the way. He gets down to the 10 and the Reavers kind of <laughs> bending, but would they break? Well, you know, they, they had some opportunities and, and uh, we we're lucky to get out of there. I think they missed the field goal um, to go. So we had a 21-7 lead at half. Yeah, missed that field goal wide right. 21-7 at the half. You missed some opportunities, I thought. And we'll find out what you thought, your full assessment of that first half when we come back. Felt like the Reavers had a little bit more control than 21-7. And we'll talk with the head coach when we return. The Western Football Coaches Show is right here on CBTV 17. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Well, the Coach Stro Show rolls on week five of the 2014 season against Ellsworth. Jake Ryan back in the studios of CBTV 17 along with the head football coach of the Iowa Western Reavers, Scott Strohmeyer. Coach, you go in up 21-7. As I said before the break, you kind of leave some opportunities on the field. What was your full assessment of that first half of play? I felt we were flat at times. I mean, we came out, we had two touchdowns uh, up 14-0, to zero, kind of gave them an opportunity to get back into it. The, you know, we had to come up with a stop there. Um, but not, not, not overly pleased. I didn't necessarily play. We just didn't have any type of enthusiasm. Um, I don't necessarily think we overlooked them, but you give a team like that some life, and now you're in for a 60-minute ball game. Well, you know what's worked in the past is maybe put some bounties on some players. That, <laughs> that, no, I'm just kidding, of course. Let's take a look at those second-half highlights and see how the home team would adjust. Iowa Western up 21-7. to As they roll out of the pile, there's Mondo Williams and Rico Gafford, a couple of the Reaver cornerbacks. Demarius Davis would go to work right away. You see him deliver and delivering to a Reaver. Anthony Brown, the first of two interceptions on the day. And there's another one of those shirt tail tackles that uh, stops him from moving forward. 
We gotta get them guys to tuck their jerseys in, and we don't get uh, no one. We you, you get these tight, tight Nike jerseys, and they all want them untucked so you can grab them. Yeah. Well, there's Lorenzo Pratt. Guess what? First touchdown of his Reaver career in the fifth game, and nice job by Lorenzo there. Here he actually here he scores for the first time. Didn't quite hit the pylon. They ruled him out of bounds with a two on the previous play. So Lorenzo first touchdown, and Russ was kind of amazed on the broadcast that he hadn't been in the end zone yet. Yeah, well, when we got down short, we either took him out or he missed one game. But, uh, you know, Anthony Anderson got most of those at the one. He's been pleading. He wanted those opportunities. Well, he got it there. Scores six. <clears throat> Option look from Ellsworth. The Reavers stop it. John Swisher comes up big on that one. And then another punt by Dayton Ballvans. Well, what a way to start. I mean, really, to start the second half. We're lucky you got this one. Um, Kick, they... catch, interference is the ruling. And you also got the ball uh, back, I believe. Was it Ben Garlock there to yeah. get the recovery? Yep. So it was good, you know, we, we had an opportunity. They said they that we blocked him into our guy, but whatever, we recovered it and got an opportunity to go uh, put another one in to go up 35 to seven on this drive. So Tay Bender on the run there. Here's Devon Pay. I love it, Devon lowering the shoulder and knocking Ellsworth's guy out of bounds. And he didn't even, he didn't go down, just went out of bounds. He's a physical runner. Bender, another physical runner. He slices right through the middle of the defense and the Reavers go up there with their fourth touchdown of the game, 28 to seven. That was the same play as uh, Davis's touchdown, but this one he ran. Actually, that makes it 35 to seven after Lorenzo Pratt. And then the complacency rolls in. You guys think you got the game in command and Ellsworth wasn't quitting. They weren't, and I, I even told their coach after the game, uh, your kids fought and fought and fought. I mean, there's numerous times where they could have been down. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they, you give them a little bit of life, and we did. We gave them some and some, you know, I feel it's going pretty good right here. And through the third quarter, we kind of held them in check, but then we hit a stalemate. So the Reavers get the football back, and, you know, you think, okay, they've got this, they've got this in control, and, and you continue to move some clock by running. And here's Danny Hamilton. And I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good leg, but it hooked it just left. And it was a kind of a line drive type kick, and that gives Ellsworth another chance. Well, and that's that's just it, you know, a chance to go 35 to, or 38 to seven. And I actually, I said before, we're going four downs here. And then if I seen 47 yards, I'm like, let's give him a shot. And then this happens. Yeah. So you miss an opportunity to go 38 to seven and, and they're getting some big chunks. Here. So Gunter and then Washburn and then the throw up to the end zone. Great catch there by a former Reaver, Tad Stephenson. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, the ball was put in a nice spot. He made a nice catch. And then rumbling across the goal line is Xavier Washburn. And it cuts the lead to 35-14, still feeling pretty comfortable. And you get the ball back again, deep in your own territory. Yeah, unfortunately you can't. You know, we, we're lucky to get, the goal is to get a first down when you're backed up. That's what we, and we do right here. Um, you know, not favorable field position. So another handoff as you just keep trying to run some clock. Anthony Anderson, who we talked about earlier, uh, getting the carries there. Here's the fake and Bender will try to go downfield and then held it a little bit too long and they roll him for the sack. Yeah, you know, that's that's the tough thing. And I think we burned the time out so we could punt with the wind. We didn't give it a great punt. We gave him great field position. And, and again, the momentum is changing. And then you get plays like this, which uh, now they're feeling pretty darn confident. Well, yeah, Demarius Davis all the way down to the 12 yard line there. and. He, uh, he, his feet kept the Panthers alive on a, on a lot of those plays. He, he did, he did a good job. He, I, I knew coming in that he was one that we really had to try to contain. Oh, and then you have the one-two punch of Gunter and Washburn and then Ty Taylor, the uh, receiver, who makes a pretty good catch there to get him inside the five. Yeah, I was, I was hoping we'd get a, a big stand here and uh, but they end up getting Getting a touchdown there on a little play action bootleg. Yeah, there's the former Reaver again. Four former Reavers on the Ellsworth roster this year, and guys that uh, saw limited, if any, action for Iowa Western, but they they came out and performed pretty well against their old team. They're, I mean, obviously they're confident or, or excited to get an opportunity, I suppose. And and we got it. We have to take that, um, and we have to respond to it. We got a ball game now. Here's a good run there by Devon Pay, and we saw it last week where he gave that second effort and lost the football. This time, he gives that second effort, gets a first down. And then I thought maybe a little bit of miscommunication here, maybe a late pull from Bender or a late stick. Was that, it a, was there, was that an just, option look? Yeah, it's one of those things, you know. And, and again, it seems like things. Some you give them some momentum, and then we're just trying to feed their momentum, and then they get this, uh, again, a nice catch, nice throw. Snuck in behind Ben Garlock there, Ty Taylor. And uh, again, <laughs> like you said, a great throw. Yeah, I mean, you go from 35 to going up, trying to get 38 to seven, to now we're uh, 35 to 27 uh, in a matter of a few minutes. Yeah, and then they try for the onside kick, and then to add insult to injury, 
uh, the kicker decides to go ahead and kick the ball afterwards, so he draws the penalty marker. You start out at the 20-yard line. That's not bad field position. No, no I mean, that, it, was, it was big for us because the momentum was, they were, we were on our heels there, and uh, we ended up being able to punch one in here. Yeah, Bender running out to the outside, a little bit of a broken play, but he hits the pylon, gets his second rushing touchdown of the game. You go up 42-27, and that would be all she wrote. Anthony Brown, here's that second interception of the, of the game. Yeah, it was, you know, it was good to, to come out on ahead. That's that's the biggest thing that I'll say. Well, you get the, you, more importantly, you get a first conference win, but you survive Ellsworth, and everybody's got to have a target on your back, especially with the latest rankings that are out right now. And you look at those final stats, Tay throwing for three touchdowns, running for two more. The interceptions maybe in the first half mm -hmm. is, is something that he wasn't real proud of. I'm sure you weren't happy with. But overall, what, what would you say about the play of the game? Well, like I said, I, I thought we played overall fairly well. There's just the, there's spurts in the game that uh, we got to find a way. I mean, you can't, when you, when you leave points out on the field and then you give them big plays, so the momentum just kind of slid. And, and it got to the point where, uh, they, they had that onside kick and they had a big mi mishap. I mean, if they get that onside kick, sure. you, you know, it's a whole different, whole different deal. Um, so we got to find, I felt we were flat. Um, we won. Hopefully it opened up their eyes that, and I, like I said, I don't think we overlooked them by any stretch, but, um, you know, I want us to focus on this week. You know what I mean? I don't care who we play. We got to focus on this week. Well, you got to have some motivation. Five games into the season, you've got six more to go in the regular season, and there's some there's some big ones. There's some big bumps in the road down the way. Sure. Hutchinson and DuPage. Obviously, you get Garden City this week in their in their building, and it's going to be a tough one. Uh, should be a heck of a ball game. We'll talk a little bit about more more about that when we come back. Of course, Travis Jacobson will be here when we return as well. He'll sit down with one of Saturday's defensive standouts. We just talked about him, linebacker Anthony Brown. He wanted to be interviewed, and now we're giving him his shot. The Stro Show continues right after this on the Reaver Sports Network and CBTV 17. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. The Coach Stroh Show continues here on CBTV 17. I'm IWTV student Travis Jacobson, joined by sophomore linebacker Anthony Brown. Anthony, welcome to the show. Yeah, Thanks thank, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you had two interceptions in the game, including a team-high 11 tackles, yes, uh, three interceptions on the season thus far. What were your impressions of the Ellsworth game? Um, honestly, in practice, we knew that the quarterback was going to be very athletic, and we knew he wasn't that great of a thrower, but we just – we worked on the scrambling drill in practice, so anytime he scrambled, we just latch up on a defender, and he happened to throw me two of them. So. Uh, you mentioned their scrambling quarterback, Dominic Wilson. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a challenge does he bring with his skill set uh, as to defending a guy who's as mobile as he is? Uh, it makes it way harder because it's already hard enough to just stop the pass, so when you got a quarterback that can run and pass, it just makes it that much harder. You guys were up 21-7 to at half. Now some people would say that you guys might have been a little bit more uh, – uh, ahead at the half at the halftime break. Yeah. Uh, what did the coaches say at the halftime to kind of make you? Um, they just chair? they just got on us and told us that we're not like we can't just come in and think someone's gonna lay down and I mean because it was twenty one to seven but we we that's not what we're about we like to you know take it out to our opponents so the coaches just got on and harped us and told us to wake up play with some enthusiasm and came together. Now, Coach Mike Blackburn, your defensive coordinator, did he talk anything specifically about? Uh, what you guys needed to focus on in the second half? Um, he really just told us that we just need to keep contained because the quarterback would bust a lot of third downs for first downs, and it just kept a, a long drive going. So he mainly told us just to keep contained and wrap up. So Now you guys are going to head on the road this week going to visit Garden City. Uh, what do you expect from them as you uh, look for the game, look towards the game? Um, they got a good quarterback once again, and – they got a scrambling quarterback. Every, their offense goes through their quarterback. So we'll have to, once again, work our scramble on practice. And, you know, because the quarterbacks, we struggle with a lot of quarterbacks like to run. So it'll be a good game. But if we do, we should, we should win. So. Now, as a defensive unit, do your coaches set any goals for you uh, for week to week? Or, is it this, or do they have season goals as well? No, nah, we, we go by week to week. And that's what they, they live by, actually, going day by day, week by week. So. We don't look ahead too much. We don't look back. We just stay day to day. But, um, yeah, we usually have a team go every week to get a goose egg on a team. 
That's the, so, that's the main goal. Yeah, we don't like when people score. So we, we try, but we haven't been that successful this year. But that's probably the team goal. Is for there this anything week. more specific that they they try and uh, focus on in terms of goals, or is uh -huh. it just basically the, the shutouts the main thing? Yeah, I mean, obviously at the end we want to win the big right. one. So the, win, the W is the most important. Yeah, part. so that's really about it. Now you, you grew up in Iowa City. Went to high school in Iowa City. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm from Chicago, but I grew up in Iowa City. Okay. Yeah. Um, what drew you to Iowa Western as a uh, program? Just the coaches, the coaches. and how they, they're known for winning. Because I really wasn't really highly recruited out of high school. So just them and the recruits and what they get made me come here. Now, you've, you've been here two years now. Yep. Uh, what do you like most about the campus? Um, Is there any one thing in speci specific? I mean, probably just the whole Reaver family, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's the best JUCO, so I like it all. Uh, I got a little inside information that your nickname is Juice. No, that's my teammate. That's your teammate. Number four, yeah. Okay, I'm, that's they Mondo's. call me Dark Knight. Yeah. Dark Knight, okay. Yeah. Where did that nickname come from? Um, I don't know. Honestly, my teammates just gave it to me, I guess. I mean, I think it's one reason because I'm dark, obviously. Right. <laughs> so, but, I mean, they just gave me the name Dark Knight, so... You wear number 22. Does that have anything special um, to you? Nah, not really, but I'm starting to like it now, I guess. Just something that you picked up on. Yeah. Well, cool. Anthony, thank you very much for yep. joining us today, and we appreciate the time. Yep. Linebacker Anthony Brown. Coming up after the break, Jake Ryan and the coach are back to talk about this week's road trip to Western Kansas. We'll be right back. Homemade noodles. Oh. Marty, stop it. That reminds me, maybe we should try a new form of birth control. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... What do you think, though? We're back to wrap things up here on the Coach Stro Show, CBTV Channel 17. The Reavers 5-0, and and now the number one team, at least co-number one team, in the NJCAA. You look at uh, the schedule coming up, Garden City this week. Another road trip to Independence the week after that. Two more at home, and then two more on the road. you still got six games in front of you, and you talk about maybe the, a little bit of complacency by the guys against Ellsworth. They, I, they're, not, they're not dummies. You're not a dummy. You, you know what's on the schedule. You know the teams that you should beat and should beat easily. How do you, how do you, I know we've asked you this before. How do you find a way to motivate everybody? Do you wear your championship ring in front of them? I mean, <laughs> what, what has to happen? Well... Hopefully, uh, last week, uh, we'll give them a little bit of reminder that you're going to get everybody's best. I mean, uh, and I think you gave some teams some hope that if you come in and play your best and we play the way we play, you can beat anybody on any given Saturday. Uh, you know, I think, and that's the approach that we try to take. I don't want to hear uh, our guys talking about any future opponents. It's Garden City. We got to, you know, it's a long road trip, the longest one of the year, and uh, they're a talented team. They're good. If we play the way we played on Saturday, uh, we're in for a, a, a long, hard battle, but um, I mean, I think football, it, we, don't, we don't get another opportunity, so it's not like you can have a, a bump in the road and, and have a shot to play for, for it all, so uh, we got to find it within ourselves. I got to do a better job of making sure that we're focused at the task at hand. Well, that's obviously the goal is being able to play for a national championship at the end of the season. Still, like we said, several more games to go. It's about bye week time in the NCAA. When those coaches start coming in to visit, I know we've seen a couple on the Reaver sideline already. Does that maybe get some guys' attention as well? Maybe they're here to look at somebody else, but somebody else sees them there trying to impress. Is, is that a good thing or a bad thing when guys are trying to uh, shine for some visiting coaches? Well, I think you can go both ways. I, the positive thing is I think we, it picks up our practice uh, a little bit, you know, just because they know they're getting looked at or evaluated. So they, they're, you know, they're motivated in practice. I think the downfall sometimes is you, as a coach, you get a little bit nervous that they're, they're not focusing at the task at hand because, uh, you know, of all the recruiting stuff. And I know coaches who don't allow um, four-year college coaches to come and watch practice or to recruit their kids until, you know, later in the season. And I mean, I'm not quite there yet, but, uh, you know, I think it's good. But at the same time, we've got to keep focus at what we're trying to do you know, on, on the field. Oh, you get Garden City this week. They're three and one, pretty good ball club. And you're going eight hours out west into to Western Kansas. Uh, what do you know about the Bronc Busters? Well, that, that's the biggest thing. You know, we, I don't think we played our best on the road the last time, so it's, it's going to be a good challenge. Uh, we're going to take off early Friday and, and try to make a stop and then get out there. It's windy out there usually. You don't know what type of weather you're getting. Um, 
I mean, they got a really good, ac a really athletic quarterback. I've said wait, it. Wait a minute. Are we going, <laughs> is this deja vu all over again? This is like the sixth week in a row now. It, it is. And, and I'm sure, you know, these guys, you know, they're watching film and, and, and I have a pretty good idea what he's going to do. I mean, he's going to drop back, and if he doesn't have his first option, he's looking to run, and, and we've had some problems with that, and we've got to really work to try to contain him. Um, probably one of the better wide receivers in the country preseason. He, he was two years ago, he was really highly recruited, and then last year he sat or he redshirted um, in, the, in the Snell kid who's really talented. So, um, you know, we're going to have our work cut out for us, but uh, like I said, after – Last week, and I think even yesterday, our, our focus was a little bit better even in our Monday kind of walkthrough. So we'll see how this week goes, but we're excited to get back on the road and see if we can't uh, redeem ourselves. Well, good luck this week. That uh, Obviously, you've been number two all season and now co-number one as the computer gets factored into those NJCAA rankings, tied with East Mississippi. So uh, that's a pretty good spot to be. But on the other side of things, everybody's giving you their best shot. Oh, for sure. That's, but that's what you want. Yep. You, wanna, you want everybody's best, and uh, you know, we'll see if we can, we can handle that now. All right, looking forward to calling this week's game. That wraps up this week's edition of the Coach Stroh Show. Saturday's broadcast on 89.7 The River and 89.7theriver.com begins at 12 o'clock with the pregame. We'll have our kickoff at 1 o'clock from Garden City, Kansas. Let us know you're listening by hitting us up on Twitter. You can follow the Reavers at Go Reavers. Maybe win yourself a free sandwich or so in the process. Thanks again to everyone involved in this week's Stroh Show. That includes head coach Scott Strohmeyer, sophomore linebacker Anthony Brown as well, plus our great IWTV crew for putting the show together. And as always to you for tuning in to CBTV Channel 17. Find that full listing on CBTV17.com. I'm Jake Ryan signing off. Catch the highlights of all the Reaver games on the Bluff Sports Zone. We'll talk with you Saturday. And until next week, wear blue, be loud, and go Reavers. Family on three, man. One, two, three. Family. Family.